Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody! Yeah, in red letters. That's Alex. That's me. In yellow. That's the ramble. That's the name of the program. Ladies okay. and gentlemen, that's Lori Thompson. This is the second time we've had to do this because I suddenly realized I was streaming. I wasn't. Oh well. Anyway, you mean we're not perfect? It, yeah, people could have actually heard this live. <laughs> oh, what a treat they signed up for. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know. Well, that's, yeah, that's a common thing, I think, for people who have, like, the equipment that you do, which is huge. Yeah, but, you know, I screw up. I mean, I, lately I screw up a lot. It, it, yeah. Like that. You know. Well, I, I think that's one of the things that makes our perception is that aging is a bitch because certain things are just bound to happen. Yeah. And if you just go into it with, what is it, lower expectations of what the body's going to do and what your opinions are going to do, they're going to morph. I think people are afraid of being a hypocrite. Well, yeah. I didn't feel that way when I was 30. I'm not going to change my mind now. Why? Right. When you can. Right. And there's no, it's an imagined sense of consequence. Right. And the less, the more that we can get away from that, the less we can make that a part of our mindset, better off we will be. Oh, boy. But, yeah. but I'm always reading something that just is like nothing sacred anymore. Mm. When, they, when I read about the Kraft American Process Singles Cheese Food, I mean, that is a mainstay. Who hasn't had a fabulous grilled cheese with mainly with maybe a, a tomato Campbell soup on the side? And now they had to, like, recall 83,000. Do they really craft singles? Craft singles because, you know, they're wrapped individually to give you that special feeling, like your lunch is going to be five star. <laughs> <laughs> so it was the packaging a strip of the packaging has mm -hmm. been staying on the cheese. They've only got like six complaints of gagging or choking, and those are the frivolous lawsuits. Well, uh, so. uh, uh, every reason why you choke on Kraft Singles, because they're Kraft Singles. Right, and they're a process, a process of cheese food. That's like three alarm bells going off at once. I love that, <laughs> cheese, cheese food, no. cheese yeah. food. I remember Space Sticks? They were out for just a season, man, it seems like. Um, they, When the astronauts went to the moon, uh, somebody decided that they would market, it was one of the large food companies, decided they would market these sticks. They were like a Tootsie Roll with some protein in it, basically. Mm -hmm. And they were called space food sticks. And the implication, which was strong, was mm -hmm. that this is what the astronauts they ate this when they were landing on the moon. You can be like an astronaut. Space food sticks. Space yeah. food sticks. Well, you know, they always said Tang. You yeah, know, yeah. That for the space yeah. program. That was. Uh, uh, just, I, I don't know who in the space program hated the astronauts enough to invent <laughs> Tang. <laughs> to feed them. Did you well, ever? Did one... you? Did you? Did you ever like Tang? My mom didn't buy Tang, so that I have that to be thankful for. And uh, but we neither did we get space food sticks because she regarded those as junk a junk food uh, ploy, yeah. and so we got she wouldn't buy me nibbets either. I loved you know, my my what? friend Bobby what? Shaw nibbets nibbets nibbets. They were like corn a cheesy corn uh, bit, um, but they were long. Was it local? Were, was it a local kind of thing where you lived? Because I never heard of, I never heard of nibbets. Well, this was not, as I know, uh, exclusively a Midwestern product, but it might have went, we were kind of the test market for everything. Really? We'll try it in the Midwest. If it doesn't kill anybody, we'll market it to the greater United States. But nibbles were pretty good. They were pretty darn good. They were like a corn curl and popcorn put together, like a flattened out corn curl with a popcorny taste. See, there was something in San Francisco when I was a kid I loved. They were called Cho-Cho's. 
Chocho's. That's got a snappy name. Yeah. And what it was, yeah, what it, it, had a, it had a clown on the... It, what it was, what it, was, it was a cup. Okay, a cup with a, a with malted milk ice cream in the cup with a stick in the cup and then a top on the stick. So and it was out of the freezer. Kid. So it came out of the freezer. So you got this cup oh. with the stick sticking out of it, and then what you did in order to eat it, you kind of used the warmth of your hands on the cup like this, and then you undid it, and there you had your cho cho. And I love those. <laughs> I just that love was, It's the process. It's the whole Cho-Cho experience. But I bet it was yeah. real ice cream. It wasn't like processed cheese ice cream or something. It, exactly. You because, know. you know, that it was a thought-out process, too. It's like they cared about your snack experience. Yeah. But that you remind me when you're talking of, uh, of ice cream and chocolate about the Colorado brewery that's come up with a stout, a stout beer with Count Chocula cereal. It's infused with Count Chocula. What? It, isn't that, that is now, the worst I'm not thing a beer ever. drinker, so no. I, I can't tell you whether that's good or bad, but I just am assuming it's horrendous. That's what I would think. I mean, you know, it's just opened up this big Pandora's box, too. Of like, I mean, I guess you can infuse anything you want to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lucky Charms Lager, you know, or my favorite. Yeah. It's a... a uh, Captain Crunch cream ale. Yeah. I mean, what? <laughs> now we, no we, we had we, we had to start this thing a second time, and we went into a big discussion about you going on in 2025. On, yes, on a world cruise. On a world cruise. With and a it, small group, and it so takes, I'll get to know th these people. They'll take, become like my cousins. The, it, but suppose you hate all of them, like your cousins. Uh, I'm just. I realize know. that's not the approach. So when I go, I give people a lot of room. Suppose, I'm have to well, suppose they're a bunch of nice people, but then there's yeah. some real horrible people. You avoid them. Well, you try or, to avoid no. them, but you can't avoid them. You're on the same ship together. Not if and, you get and, them and hammered and, and throw them over. How many months is this thing going to take you? Five months. Five months. Okay. Yeah. So for but five you know, months, you, go you got, you got, you got you, there's this guy, oh, here comes Bob again. Let's just don't even, <laughs> you know. And, and, and you're spending your entire five-month world tour vacation trying to avoid certain people well that there are ways to do that and you know what's funny is that your routines eventually do that for you some because you gravitate to the people that you like it's just human nature mm -hmm. and so if bob goes to breakfast the same time as you are then you're probably gonna subconsciously tailor right the breakfast time you go. Yeah. Like my cousin, Mike, he taught psychology to me when I was in high school, he was a high school teacher, mm -hmm. but his college psychology experiment was the teacher said, devise an experiment that will manipulate my behavior. Don't tell me what it is. And then we'll evaluate it at the end of the sem semester. Okay. He said this yeah. to the class as a whole. So they got together and said, if he, if he wrote on one end of the chalkboard, yes, kids, that was, they were chalkboards, mm -hmm. they would react favorably. If the middle, they would react indifferently. And if the other side of the board, they would react negatively. By the end of the semester, they had him writing in a tiny little corner of the positive part of the board, which you do. It's subtly, you know, the feedback, if a person pays attention to feedback, and I try to, mm -hmm. um, you can, you can, you're, you'll determine that. You'll determine that without a whole lot of looking yeah. an Excel spreadsheet. Now, who's who's loading or unloading the dishwasher? Well, I know the crew. No, well, no, no, no. I'm talking about. I hear noise like somebody's. Oh, that's my husband eating. Oh, yeah, he was. <laughs> he was. He was in fact taking dishes out of the dishwasher. He's very good about that. That's his job. Mine is kind of to empty the trash. Because I like going out, and, you know, heaving it. Like I, I carry it out like the Old Spice guy, and then I heave it. I like and emptying it. out the dishwasher. See, he does too, or he doesn't mind it, you know. And my dad used to say, "Do a job twice, and it's your job." <laughs> From then on, wow. and it's kind of true. I mean, at least in a family situation. Yeah. But yeah, he's he's good about that. Have you noticed though that in a marital situation, which this is my first, it's only been two years, I don't have all the answers. But there are certain things people just naturally like to do more than others. And in a marriage situation, if you relax 
and let your and let your cells as a unit choose those, then mm -hmm. you're going to get along. Yeah. You know, that's so anyway, I got to tell you, we went. Uh, I got I got up early today. Yeah. That's why I'm so, so loopy. This is why. I, yeah. And I, I, I got really loopy uh, from not being able to sleep, but I had to get up early so we could go up the up the block to go get our, um, uh, what do you call it? The COVID Vaccine shot. Vaccine boosters. The COVID yeah. shot, the latest COVID shot. So we, we uh, and, and the original COVID shot we we're supposed to get, they didn't, they didn't, hadn't gotten enough of the COVID vaccine because somehow, there was less being delivered to Harlem than to anywhere in the city. Ooh, little, little I looked into that if I were the post. Little scandal on that one, okay? Yeah. All right. Um, so we went up today. They rescheduled it today. So we went up this morning. I had to get up early because it was 10.20 for mine. And, <laughs> but you had your Count Chocula cereal. So you yeah, yeah right. No, I just drank the Count Chocula yeah. beer. Oh, cool. Yeah. Anyway, so um, we go up there, and uh, they process everything. They say, oh, we can't take your insurance. I said, our insurance is Medicare. It's supposed <laughs> to cover it. They said, well, Rite Aid isn't covering it. Oh, you even have Rite Aid? They've disappeared in these parts. Oh, so we left. Marjorie then gets a call. Well, there's been a, was a problem with the computers. And ah. yes, we can process yours now. When do you want to come? So they said, uh, we told them, um, uh, what do you call it, 2.30, uh, because that would be a half hour after you and I are through. But because we had to redo this, I'm going to have to rush to get my clothes on. And go oh, up man. Stuff. See what you get for working in your underpants? But I mean, we had more trouble getting this goddamn shot. It was hor It's horrible. Well, not we got the... COVID vaccine, the boosters, and I still come down with COVID twice. So I'm not busy. It was very bad the first time. The second time, not so bad. <laughs> I'm kind of immune at this point. <laughs> no, that's an attitude you can get. But it, it, it does feel like the flu still. And yeah. I don't know how many times you have to get it before you're I got it. The second time I got it. First time I got it, I, I caught it just as I started getting it. And so I then had, uh, did the Pro, pro, what, what is it? The pro, oh, pro. for COVID, Paxlovid. 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 It's a <laughs> J Jerry Lewis drug. Uh, and uh, I, I bet the second time I got it. I mean, I slept that night. It was just horrible. It's just yeah, it's, weird. Yeah. yeah, just stay knocked out the whole time. And I That's, don't know if I've even felt 100% since then. You know, it does take a toll on you for, a, I think, a month or two or more. After. Well, they've talked about long haul and that the yeah. long haul thing is really it's very real. And they've yeah. even tested things and it makes changes in your blood. I, yeah, I believe it. I really believe but it. I, but uh, let's not talk about it. Because then they'll say, well, you talked about uh, uh, COVID and we're going to have to demonetize you. You know, I mean. Oh, man. I, I hate YouTube. I hate, I hate public correctness. Like a friend of mine's a big classic rock uh, yeah. lover. Yeah. They start doing a weekend shift there. And so I, the band Cream, we were talk talking about the band Cream, how if it made its debut in this politically correct day and age, it would be like, soy, uh, lactose-free coffee lightener. You know, everything everything in our mentality is so different because of public and political correctness. Well, I think I'm tired of it. I'm really tired of it, you know. I, uh, uh, yes, I, I think it's terrible to do certain things, okay? And I think it's inappropriate. But let's leave them at that as being inappropriate. We are the overreaction generation. Everybody overreacts. We see it on TV. You know, it's like, why are they making such a big deal of that? Well, you know, my family, like, get yeah. over yourself. This comedian Russell Brand, do you know who he is? Yes, and there's some sexual accusation on him. Yeah, do you know when he supposedly did this stuff? When he was a teenager? About 20 years ago. Yeah. Now, um, you know, there should be an expiration date on political correctness. In other words, 
This is like when, when back in the uh, in the fifties, you had the McCarthy hearings, and you had uh, the Hollywood uh, um, communist hearings, and so on. Yeah, and what they would say, are, "Have you now, or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party?" Well, yes, I was. No. I was back in nineteen thirty six, but then I decided it was ridiculous, and I didn't. I, I stopped going to the meetings. Right? Yeah. Well, that should be all you'd have to say. Hey, I'm not a communist now. Right. You know, well, if you did something inappropriate 20 years ago, yeah, you did something terrible and you should be chastised for it, but you shouldn't be. I'll give you a good example. Uh, an actor that most people agree is supposed to be a real asshole, this guy Spader. Uh, Jane, uh, no, what's his name? Spacey. Kevin, Spader Kevin Spacey. Uh, Armin Hammer, yeah. Kevin Spacey. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, he got accused of a whole bunch of stuff here and in England. Yeah. And um, he um, went to court on all of them, and he was exonerated on every one of the charges, both here and, and there. Got settled. Boom, boom, yeah. boom. Do you think he's ever going to work again? I don't know. He got yanked from House of Cards so fast you didn't even realize. Yeah, it. and he he. But I mean, it, the fact of the matter is, he probably is, will never work again, and yet he has not been found guilty of anything. Right. Well, to me, that's to, the McCarthy era all over again. It is of a different kind. It, it boils down to guilt, losing guilt by uh, you know uh, guilt by uh, not association but by. Uh, by inference, you know, and it's yeah. terrible. It's just terrible. I, I hate it. You know? It's like Marvin Gaye, believe half of what you see, some are none of what you hear, except in our case. Right. We're going to go, some days we're like up to 50%, 57%, I would say. Yeah. 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 You can believe us. We're going to yeah. go with the visual option this time. So, but, uh, so yeah, yeah, that, anyway, what? It's the, it's, it's the sponsor. See, now that we have the internet, the technological uh, ability to rally people, rally people with your same narrow-mindedness or same um, same conviction. I won't say it's narrow-mindedness. Everybody's got their convictions, but now the internet enables us, and social media enables us to rally people to boycott sponsors and boycott things, and that gives them muscle. But what it's doing is it's giving singular people more power than they deserve. Right, people you would never probably hang out with. Yeah, that you're giving them that because they're just on the internet a lot. I mean, I I keep thinking, you know, I can't. I was pretty. I was always very good, I think, to women. I you know. I, I, you were. Yeah, I was. I, I was never. I never pushed myself I, on them. You know. You, no. You remember me? You know. A pretty uh, genteel. Guy. A pretty genteel. My father always wanted me. He said, "When you're with a woman, be a gentleman." Yeah. yeah. That, that, that was what I was taught. But the fact is that I think back and I go, could there be one of those women who was crazy enough to say that I did something? Well, you because know, it's and if it happened today, you know, I'd be in a lot of trouble. It's dueling perception of any event. Like some people are having the time of their life and other people are miserable at a particular party or something like that you're when you're dealing with perceptions that's where it gets so subjective well and here's, here's what happens all you need in this day and age is let's say you you know you slept with somebody mm -hmm. and they come back and say he forced himself on me no i didn't I mean, what, what kind of people are you who are they going to believe first her or me it's i think it's changing but I think it's changing, like it, but, but, Dad used to say, it's human nature to overcorrect. So now there's the Me Too movement, which I never subscribe to 100% because I think there's so many valid claims and I feel for those women, I do. And I've had a couple sketchy things in my past, you know, mm -hmm. when I was in the smaller markets. And and yet it's change, it's overcorrecting because it's, now it's just like the women are always to be believed. And I well, think what I'm saying is if, if I were accused, if I were accused today by some woman, they're going to believe her rather than me. Even and though, what about they, even in a gay she, couple? Yeah. yeah, I mean, who do you believe? I mean, in a gay couple, there are the same kinds of abusive relationships. 
and yet, boy, now you're. Well, now, now you got two guys. What do you do about that? You know. Yeah, that, that the stereotype doesn't apply, which is liberating to a degree. But yeah, yeah. But I but, just didn't uh, like the way, uh, in in these cases of these accusations against people, mm -hmm. that the guy was always the one who had to defend himself, and you know, I always got very mad at uh, uh, what was his name, the comedian. Oh God. My uh, Dice Clay? No, no, no. The no. other um, yeah, guy. Oh, boy. Well, anyway. Um, well, then I can't bring it up because I can't remember his name now. Uh, oh, comedian? Yeah. Had, did he have a line or he had a shtick? He had a yeah. TV. He had TV shows. Uh, okay. Uh, but I'll remember the name in a while, you know. <laughs> probably. Just I can't remember things when I'm doing all these drugs, you know. But, yeah, but there's prescriptions. These, huh? these are prescriptions you should mention. Yeah, yeah or no, not, they are. to be politically correct, then you should mention their prescriptions. Unfortunately, <laughs> but anyway, so he um, he supposedly uh, some women accused him of being in his room while he was on the road or something, and they were comedians themselves. And he said, "You don't mind if I pull my penis out, do you?" And he pulled his penis out. Are you thinking of Louis C.K.? Louis C.K., right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Why don't you move to New York and be my memory, okay? <laughs> yeah, I'll be and, your scribe. <laughs> anyway, Louis C.K., and, and he said, and I, well, I, he, he, he's had trouble working ever since. They go to see him when he's on the road. He has a very good, you know, he's very, makes a lot of money in the clubs, okay? Yes. But he can't. Yes. The TV shows, dried up on him. Movie deals, dried up on him. Because yeah. his career was going like gangbusters. Yeah. But for a my while. question is, was always was, what did he do wrong? He simply said to these women, "You don't mind if I pull my penis out, do you?" And then he pulled it out, but he warned them ahead of time. Yeah, that's why see, I don't they just leave. Well, some women weren't raised in an atmosphere. I don't know with their family or situations where they felt the right to speak up and say. You can, but I'm going to tell you to put it back, you know, or something like that. You have to be fast on rejoinder, though. I can't, which I can't remember the name of the big Hollywood uh, big wig that was in San Francisco for the one night stand shows that we did. Okay, for HBO. Yeah. But he was a, he was a big manager, and I can't remember yes, his name, was. and maybe that's just as well. Yeah, I remember his name, but uh, it, 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 and and he trapped you in a room. Do you remember that? Well, a bunch of us were sitting on a couch, and because it was a crowded couch, after every, then everyone left to mm -hmm. see this next person do their set, mm -hmm. the one night stand. And so they left, and he and I were left sitting on the couch because I'm a Midwesterner who doesn't just go, I'm going to leave now. And uh, so we were having a conversation, and uh, he gets up, like when the room is cleared, and puts a chair under and it wasn't flirty it wasn't flirty or anything he gets up and puts a chair under a doorknob and i'm like what in the world does that work for you i didn't say that though i simply got up i got the chair and moved it back opened the door and said this is not appropriate yeah i, that's, I remember that's what you said to him this is totally oh. inappropriate yeah, and then I walked out and enjoyed the show. Yeah, but see, I was raised in a, a family where women, my mother, <laughs> can be mouthy, can be not mouthy, just assertive. Say, yeah. but but I realized when I took that into the world that it helped to be quick. But I, to... I remember that situation, and uh, he was a big Hollywood producer, right? He was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but uh, I don't know what he's doing now. Don't care. Um, but I well, he'd be, that, if he may, gave his name, he might be suing us. So exactly. well, it's not. Yeah, so you know. better do that. But um, I think that eventually, see, the thing is, that kind of confidence when you're that age. I was in my well, that, that kind of action by a guy like that is totally inappropriate. A lot of people wonder about Harvey Weinstein and why he was the way he was. And the reason he was the way he was is because this guy's exactly the same way. That was the Hollywood ethos. You did yeah. that. If you were big, you were an agent and whatever, you, that, you put the chair under the door. 
and it was a transaction. If I'd left the chair, I guess we were having a transaction, but I wasn't in the comedy world. I was, you know, we did our show and loved it and had fun, but these people, their entire careers were hinging on this night. Yeah. And he was used to being around comedians whose careers Careers hinged on on that night. Yeah. Yeah, and I didn't, he didn't have that power over that perceived power over me well so that's was, the tough Lori thompson don't screw around with her <laughs> yeah there there were times when tough Lori thompson didn't show up for me quite as well. i hope we will see you next week my dear we shall ladies and, and i will yeah. report back to you i will zoom you from the party from okay, our reunion oh oh, oh, oh yes please I'll, okay. I'll be I'll, I'll be around saturday for that okay okay talk to you okay. later my dear Lori thompson okay, ladies and gentlemen now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, yes, there she was, Lori Thompson. I love Lori, and I love having her on here, and I'm glad that we've now touched base again, okay? Anyway, let me see here. Let me turn down my earphones a bit, uh, and uh, I think we're ready to go. We only have one person here, though. We, we have uh, Charlie Wallace is about it, okay? And uh, if he, he's got to know that I've just clicked on him. Uh, there we go. There he is. Okay. All right, just you and me, uh, Charlie. Hi. Wow. Uh, so let's talk science. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. How you doing? Doing pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. How was your how was your weekend? It was good. And uh, how were the last couple of days since I saw you on Wednesday, mo- Monday rather? Yep. Yep. No, it's been, it's been good. I, I just you know. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm off this week. We're between seasons, so I don't start up again until next Monday. Yes, so. he he uh, he went from being a, um, a, a rocket scientist basically to uh, being a coach for softball. Well, umpire, yeah. Umpire. Is that umpire? Yeah. I thought you were yeah. a coach. I thought you were a coach. I'm sorry. Well, then you're not as good as a coach. <laughs> no. No. Yeah. And they pay you for this, don't they? Oh, yeah. Do they, they, pay, do they pay you good? It depends on what you mean by good. It's, a, it's an excellent pay for a part-time job. Oh, okay. All right. That sounds good. You know, that sounds terrific. Uh, come to the math side we have pie. Oh, we have pie. Boy. <laughs> I'm wearing my favorite shirt. Everybody loves it. I speak fluent sarcasm. That's, That's me. Very good. Terrific. Uh, let me go get my coffee here. <laughs> Got to do this to keep myself awake. I yeah. have a, uh, I, ha- I have to, tomorrow morning, I have a dental appointment. My first in a couple of years. <laughs> Yeah, those are always fun. I can, so I can always wait for that, you know. Uh, and what happens is they, they're going to do a cleaning, all right, and they'll do some x-rays. And what I call it is it's the excuse for them to find out how much money they can make off of you. Yep. Right? Because I've never oh. come out of one of those things where they didn't say, oh, well, I think there's a cavity here. I think we better do something about <laughs> that. they got to plan out their vacation schedule, so they need to know what well, money no, they need their be. yacht. They, they got to pay off that yacht, okay? You know, yeah. I mean, yeah, I remember when I was younger, when I was a kid, um, dentists were not that expensive, you know? Uh, hell, I used to go to a dentist, and he'd fill a cavity, and I think the way they filled them was $5 a side or something like yeah, that. Yeah, a surface, yeah. Yeah, yeah $5 a surface. Now you're lucky if you get out of a dental office for under, you know, several thousand dollars, right? <laughs> and I'm sure they'll find something wrong with me tomorrow, and it will then cost me a ton of money, which I don't care at this point. I, I, can, I can afford to spend it, but, you know. Five or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, five dollars a surface. Yeah, wait a minute. Oh, I keep get out of a dental. <laughs> is is Hi, Jeff. Oh, oh, well, Jeff moved. Right? Jeff, do you know how to yeah. kill it? Find something wrong with me tomorrow, and it will bring Jeff. Yeah. That's you. Me. Which Close one? your browser, Jeff. Oh boy. Okay, I'll take your word to spend it. 
I don't know of what part of kill the browser he doesn't understand. There we go. It sounds like he did it. Now we're Sorry. now now Brian <laughs> Yes. Where yes, hi. Where, where are you? In my car. Mm. You're, oh you're in your car. Yeah, I'm in uh San Jose on the other side of San Jose going home right now. Mm. So I just want to I just want to call because usually this is light and then you're gonna not be on the show anymore and all those threats. I mean, all those things. All those so. threats. Oh, so you you call me just out of guilt? Is that is that yes. what it's all about? Yes, exactly. Oh okay. no, yeah. I missed you last week. That's why. So. Well, you missed me when? Um, last week. Remember, you were hurt your back and all that stuff. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was he hurt. Took one day off. Yeah. And then Friday okay. night, I think I was busy or something. So. Yeah, I took one night off last week, and uh, <clears> you know. Um, I should should have taken it off tonight too, but I didn't. You know, so mm. that's the you're way not, I not am. Feeling better. What? You're not feeling better. You're not feeling better. I'm feeling better, uh, quite a bit better. You see, it was very damp here. It was raining like hell. I mean, you heard about the New York City floods, you know? Oh yeah. And it was terrible, and and that affected my every bone in my body was aching as a result of it so that that was that as a, <clears throat> i'm just getting old folks i'm sorry i i hate to do it to you but i'm 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 getting there yeah All right do you ache when it rains uh jeff of course oh of course same thing see? that's why i think a lot of jews good. moved to florida during the winter that's what i do i think <laughs> i finally understand it now that's right. Only, isn't there a better place in Florida that I can go where it's warm? You know? Do I have to go down to Florida and live with that? Those Cuba. Ho Cuba. <laughs> oh, fine. Georgia. You're not allowed to go anymore. Anyway, um, uh, you know what I, I've really been enjoying is the daily doings of Donald Trump in his trial oh, here in yeah. New York City. Uh, as I told you last week, the common thread that I have with my life and with Donald Trump's life, the, two, the one degree of separation is that we've both, both had the same judge. That was the judge for our case with the landlord um, that went on for quite a long time. And uh, he had an assistant with him uh, who we got to know as well who was like his, uh, his, his law clerk, actually, is what they call her. And uh, it's sometimes the law clerk knows more than the judge does about the law. And so that's why you have a law clerk. But anyway, uh, and, uh, I, and she was there for our entire trial. Yesterday, turns out Donald Trump decides on his social media thing, what's it called? Yeah. Uh, uh, Whatever. Truth or whatever. Yeah, Truth Social. He decides to go after her. Wow. And, yeah, and the judge said, "Look, you can come after me. I got, I, uh, I can handle it. You don't go after my staff. Uh, and if you continue to do that, I will be forced to take stern measures to make sure you don't. So I'm hereby putting a gag order on you when it comes to anybody on my staff." So now it's another person we know <laughs> that's been involved in this trial. It's really, uh, really getting to be something. That, you see, the thing is that what Trump doesn't understand is he's screwing with the wrong guy. Mm -hmm. yeah. This guy, it's, it's not that he's tough. It's just he, he, he won't take any nonsense from anybody. But let me tell you a quick story here about him that I don't think I've really told on the air. Uh, people sometimes act very stupid where court cases are concerned, and our landlord got exceedingly stupid. What he did was he sent letters to the judge threatening him. Oh, Jesus. Much like Trump is doing Trump now. Is doing, yeah. And he just, you know, he, in the final judgment that he did on us, 
he wrote a paragraph that said, in the sake of transparency, let me tell you what went on. But this guy kept sending us these, he sent us three emails or three letters or whatever that were inappropriate and that uh, has threatened my staff and threatened me and I just want you to know that so that you know what went on here. And he mentioned that in the final judgment. I, I'm, I don't think I'm saying anything out of school because you can, if you want to, you can probably go find the final judgment online somewhere and read it for yourself. And he, uh, he just said that this, this guy threatened us, threatened me with uh, that he uh, you know, was going to uh, uh, make, uh, stop me from being a judge and whatever, and all these, very stupid to do, especially when you're in court with a judge. And this is exactly what Trump did, and his response was not unlike the response to our landlords. Hey, you don't screw around with me, you know? You you know you 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 respect the court for what it is. You came to it to get some kind of resolution, and uh, you don't you don't uh, call out names or make fun of people or whatever. And so I know this guy as. And then I uh, after we were through with our part of the case, he invited us into his uh, chambers, and uh, we sat with him for about twenty minutes talking back and forth. Very nice guy. You know, when he's a judge doing his job, you don't know what kind of guy he is. When you get him in a very personal situation like that, you find out. Very nice guy, and his law clerk, quite as nice as he was. So, I mean, uh, uh, you know, this is not a, a nasty guy or a mean guy or a, or a vindictive guy, but you take off after him, and he's not putting up with that. So I thought I'd just tell you that to make mm -hmm. you understand what kind of a judge he is. And in our particular case, uh, uh, he just wanted people to know what went on because he didn't want anybody to say, oh, that's why he, he held something against the, the landlord. He said, for the sake of transparency, I want you to know this little thing that went on. Needless to say, that little paragraph followed him through his appeals and the Court of Appeals, and they all saw that too, probably, and went, well, screw these guys, <laughs> you know. But he's, he, he, was, he, was, when, he would not take crap from anybody. But on the other hand, he was very easy to get along with, you know. So it, 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 he, he, he's an amazing guy, and so anybody that wants to put him down for trying to get Donald Trump or whatever, he's just not that kind of judge. He just judges based on what he sees, you know? And uh, when he, and he read our case perfectly. Uh, so, you know, and that's not because it came out on our side, but just because he read it correctly. Uh, if you read the, it, it got to see the, uh, uh, the results of our, of his, uh, his decision, uh, you would see that he was very thoughtful of thinking about everything that he came to a decision on and explained why. So, Anyway, this is what, who Donald Trump is having to deal with. And I don't know what he, what he thinks he's doing, you know, and, and what he thinks he's accomplishing by trying to alienate the judge. The only person, by the way, that comes between him and a final resolution yeah, of no this jury. There's no jury. And by the way, there could have been a jury but his lawyers forgot to ask for one. <laughs> so now they don't get a jury. So anyway, I just thought that was wonderful that not, not only was it my judge, but now it was also that law clerk of his. Mm. Uh, so I, I felt it was kind of, you know, mm. oh, look who's here. Look who's here. I hope it's him. I hope it's not somebody saying he's him. No, that's, that's oh, Don that's Giller. Him. That's our boy. Hello, Don. Hey, don't, don't let me interrupt your fascinating discussion on the judge. Yeah, no, but uh, you know, it's just, I just want people to get an insight into the case and what Trump is up against. And he's not up against a tough judge. He's up against a judge that just doesn't put up with nonsense. And let's face it, Donald Trump is a hundred percent nonsense. Nonsense. You know. So anyway, so what's happening, Geller? Geller. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I like how you always mispronounce my name. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> I think I do it on purpose because I know it's <laughs> Giller. You know. I remember I, I served on a jury in 1972 in, in New York, and the judge was the guy who presided over the John Lennon rock and roll uh, 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 lawsuit. That uh, that he, he had John had recorded an album in '74 and of rock and roll tunes, and uh, the Phil Spector gave the tapes to some other company and they illegally put it out. So John Lennon sued. Um, so after my case was dismissed, I went to the uh, to the judges. Uh, 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 not what quarters? What are they called? Shape chambers. Jack chambers. Right. Yes. Uh, didn't talk to him, but I talked to his clerk. He had photos of the of the disputed album and, and the official Apple album, uh, and it was fun. It was like the first time I had fun at jury duty. Now, <laughs> do you know that that was the rock and roll album, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, do you know what's on there? Um, the songs. What was the big hit that came out of that album? Uh, Stand by me, maybe. No. Whatever gets Stand you through. Stand by me was on no. it. Whatever gets you through the night is on that album. No, no, that's on Walls and Bridges. Is it on Walls and Bridges? Yeah. Oh, okay. I was just going to say because uh, I'm very fond of Whatever Gets You Through the Night because supposedly John wrote it while listening to me. <laughs> wow. I, I did an overnight show, and at some point during the show, I guess I was told this. Uh, I said uh, to somebody who called up and said, blah, 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 blah. And I said, whatever gets you through the night. And he wrote, oh, that's a good idea for a song. And he wrote, whatever wow. gets you through the night. So. And, and how many royalty checks have you got? Zero. <laughs> yeah. Still, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, so I, I, I feel pretty. I, I heard it. Where did I hear it? Somebody told me. And it was somebody who was in a place to know. That that was the reason that song was written, mm -hmm. uh, I'm and looking uh, it up now. Y yeah, let's we'll see if they say anything. Uh, you, he's going to correct me now. <laughs> no, I'm not going to correct he's you. He's doing the research. Uh, I mean, a lot of people might not know that that was the case. You know. Uh, well, you should get some royalty from it, a free hmm? album or something. You're I got to free... hate me. What? Uh, Wikipedia says he was watching Reverend Ike. <laughs> Reverend a, Ike? A famous black evangelist who was saying... I can't believe you everything you read <laughs> on the internet. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, so obviously it's a mistake. Obviously. No, I mean, I, I heard that, you know, he was listening to the show, and he heard me say, whatever gets you through the night. And he liked that as a title for a song, so he went ahead and did it. You know. That's great. I, I, I believe That's what you, I heard. I believe this. Uh, I was told it by Yoko. Okay. <laughs> no, it wasn't. But, you know. I believe you more than I believe Reverend Ike. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I just don't. And he's dead. So. Well, I don't think John would particularly listen to Reverend Ike. Yeah. You know. It says, it, it says here he was he was uh, he was channel surfing. He loved to channel surf. And would pick up phrases from all the shows, and one time he was watching River and Ike. Well, maybe he was listening to Alex Bennett and heard that term. <laughs> well, let me see. I think uh, River and Ike is a, a synonym for Alex Bennett. Yeah, so yeah, right, right. Cinnamon, yeah. huh? Okay. Mm. So, uh, yeah. I want to tell you what this guy did, uh, uh, what he does with his life, okay? Don. Who are you talking about? I'm talking about you. Hmm. My wife? Oh, my life. Right, I thought life. you said my wife. So this guy, uh, this guy, uh, oh, Rupert G., who owned the Hello <laughs> Deli, which was in the build, same building as the uh, as the Late Show, David Letterman, right? And you may remember Rupert G. He used to go over to Rupert G.'s Deli all the time, and they would do stuff. To begin with, you found in your research something very interesting. You thought he had been on about. 200 some odd times, right? Yeah. You went did the research. How many times was Rupert G on that show? There's Rupert. 
How many times? It rings a bell with anyone. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, uh, 445. 445 times. Yeah. That is a full 10% of the history of the show? Yeah, 10.56. 10, 10. Oh, geez. You really do I, I, your I, math. I need to be don't accurate. 2.56. <laughs> now, what, what Don here did is he made up a tribute uh, to Rupert G by taking a still from every show he was on, the 445 shows he was on, right? Nobody cares. I know, but you put them to music, one right after the other, right? It's like about how long is it, five minutes long or something? Uh, three and a half. Three and a half what, minutes what, long. What was like is that, is that the, the music it was uh, Ian Hunter's, it, it was the CBS Orchestra's break music of Ian Hunter's uh, Central Park and West. Mm-hmm. And I noticed that the beats lined up with the pictures. Yeah. Uh, but they didn't, but I found a way to do it. And it goes in sync and then it goes out of sync, but it comes back in sync. And it's something, you know, I, I played with it and, to where I couldn't do much about it. So I was pretty happy with it. How uh, long did it take you to do this? Um, I, I, I'm hesitating because there are several stages involved. So with with counting all of those stages, I'd say it took about a month. About a month, yeah. every day of a month. Because the first thing I had to do was was compile an accurate database of his appearances, mm-hmm. um, and I had three sources. One was mine, which was skeletal. One was someone else, a friend who who, who uh, he had a log of every show, mm-hmm. and then there was late late show's own database, um, and he. Each one, mine, his friend David's, and and Lecho's, they had missing data, or they had unique data. Mm-hmm. Um, so it please, took a ladies and weeks gentlemen, to... let's get this man a life. <laughs> no, you, you, I, you brought I watched, it up. <laughs> what? I watched, I watched Letterman obituaries from Don Geller, and oh. you know how long the obituary, his obituary thing was. Who's obituary? It was Letterman, obituary talking, of, doing, doing obituaries. I watched, I don't know, I got down a rabbit hole, and I'm watching <laughs> Don Geller's obituaries from, you know, from Letterman saying him on the air. You know how long that was? Uh, an hour, hour and a half, I forget. Two, two, two over hours. Two yeah. hours. <laughs> wow. Don, in case you don't know, for the longest time, did these videos of the Letterman oh show. And he would, he would sometimes <laughs> do something like that. Here are all the obituaries that Letterman ever did. Uh, yes. <laughs> and then end to end, it was, it was obituaries, obituaries, you know. Yeah, and he had some, some performances by some of the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two hours, Isn't six it? minutes. Two hours, yes, six minutes, and 51 seconds. Now, but, you, yeah, you know, some, I got to tell you something about Letterman. Uh, <laughs> it was something that I discovered mm-hmm. today. Um, and as an interviewer, I could tell what was going on in Dave's brain while he was doing the interview. Today, I saw the worst interview that David Letterman ever did because Letterman was completely at odds with how to handle it. Was that? And that was Dustin Hoffman oh, and Robert, Robert De, Niro. De Niro. Yeah. He f- completely fell apart. He was, by the end of it, he was just simply reading lists of movies they had done, hoping they would say something. But you, you know the show, don't you? Yeah, well, I mean, the one problem, uh, and I'm not excusing David's performance. Oh, no, De Niro didn't want to be there. Yeah, De Niro didn't say anything. He, he was a one-word answer kind of guy. So, so Dave had nowhere to go with it. Um, right, and but, so, he, so, but yeah, you're right. He but, was struggling, but, but he, he was, was struggling. He was, and what I would have done, okay, if I were Dave, is I would have just concentrated on Dustin Hoffman, who was very easy to talk to, who he sat on separately. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the Le- uh, De Niro had never been on. Did De Niro ever come on again? No, no. That was, that it, was huh? it. Um At the end of the show, they, I, I, I don't know if you're, I, and also, everyone else, I apologize for monopolizing this. So I, I, I no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging you to monopolize yeah, it. But, so. but it's Alex's fault. Um, <laughs> Come on. 
<laughs> there was a a, a, a routine, a a, 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 a uh, what I forget what it's called, but it doesn't matter. Uh, where where Dave would would interview a guest, and then in the next segment, Alan Coulter would have the guest sitting by him. Yeah. And and Alan would be really pissed off because Dave had already had him on, and so <laughs> Alan was just just full of invectives and just just insulting Dave mercilessly. In fact, Dave encouraged him to do that, and and there was one episode that. That, that never aired and it included uh, Dustin Hoffman and Robert De Niro. Um, uh, it was cut from the show. Um, I got a hold of it, so when I put together a compilation of all of Alan Coulter's celebrity interviews, I ended it with, with uh, Dustin Hoffman and uh, Robert De Niro. And I also want to say something about the eulogy collection. Um, it ends with his mom's eulogy. And, and he, she had died two years after the show had ended. But the show had put together a eulogy, just in, you know, it's like New York Times when they put together, they have eulogies for, for his people mother, who died here. Yeah, his mother probably did die after the show was over, because yeah, I don't died, remember him died, ever uh, doing a whole thing about my mother died. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she died the day before he turned, uh, before his birthday. Yeah. Um, and uh, and they, they, had, they had repackaged the, mm. the, the eulogy for a more upbeat thing that did air on the show. Um, you know, lots of the same footage, but but happier music. Um, but this eulogy was far more somber, um, and so I included that at, at the end. Even though the my, the, the way I titled it was uh, the eulogy collection uh, to to 2015, because that's when the show ended. Because I didn't want I didn't want worldwide pants to get to get to wonder why is he saying 2017, and they'd look at it and and I'd be in trouble. Um, so it was sort of an Easter egg. Yeah. Right yeah. Well, I I uh, <laughs> I just think that you do a lot of hard work on these things. And you're right. I have no wife. Well, I mean, I want to know what you do with it when you have time to live a life. Well, what I haven't hey, what done yet is, is the Shecky <laughs> thing on 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 Pop Up. I haven't done that yet. On oh, on my show. Yeah. 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 But that that's that's been on hold, and I apologize for it. Oh no, that's fine. That's fine. Um. I spent I spent the the month of August researching the life of my sixth grade elementary school teacher. <laughs> oh wait a minute! Hold on a second. Excuse me, folks. While I talk to Don here, he is one of the weirdest <laughs> human beings I've ever known. Okay, you're I'm enjoying this. Say yeah. <laughs> so you're the one. <laughs> no, so say this again. You're you're what years? There was a woman named Eleanor Lindner. She was my our sixth grade teacher. And she left a mark on all of us. And why did she hit you know, with a ruler? <laughs> with a felt did. pen? Did she leave a mark with a felt pen? Okay, all right, keep it up. Mine was much better. Okay. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Yeah, you got you guys fight your among your puns. Yeah. Um, I found out that her husband was friends with Norman Mailer. Really, and, and it became a lot more interesting than I had ever envisioned. Um, uh, uh, her her children are still alive; they're in their late seventies, early eighties, and we connected. I I, I talked. I, I corresponded with with Mailer's daughter Susan, uh, with Mailer's biographer Michael Lennon. Hmm. Um, so it it I. I, I wasn't expecting any of this, so it, to me it became pretty fascinating. And and and, and the children, he, uh, she has one daughter. She had one daughter and two sons. Those two sons became preeminent bluegrass players in Vermont, um, and they're they're well known in that state. Um, so yeah, it was to me it was it was it was it was worth the worth the work. I I enjoyed it. It's amazing you even call these people. I mean. Um, well, first I contacted Susan Mailer, and then she she gave me the she asked the daughter Eleanor Linder's daughter if 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 she could if she could share with me her email address, mm -hmm. and she said okay. So I contacted her. We spoke on the phone a couple of times. Then he she gave me her brother's email. Mm -hmm. um, so that's uh, and and Michael Lennon. Uh, 
I don't think he gave me any addresses, but but he was really yeah, helpful. Yeah, but I mean, it's just, it's just uh, so even something as simple as that, you do a lot of research on, you know. Yeah, but it was I, I, it was fun. I I enjoyed learning new stuff, and yeah. and 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 so did the children. They, they, now, do you I, have any desire? And I can't imagine that you do, but do you have any desire to do with Letterman what you di- uh, what you did with Letterman to say Jimmy Fallon or Colbert? Who? I don't Col- know who you're talking about. Or, I've never heard of these people. Or, or Stephen Colbert, because no, I can't Colbert. imagine you would want to. He's on PBS, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I mean, uh, 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 no. Uh, another thing I want to do, I, I, um, when I was a kid, we are talking mid-60s, mm-hmm. um, I grew up in Baltimore. And I, and I got hooked on a, a, a pop radio station in Boston called WBZ. And are mm-hmm. you familiar with it? With I've the, heard of it, yeah. Colors? Yeah. Um, and I taped a lot of their shows uh, onto Reel to Reel, and, and I've digitized, I think, one <clears> or two tapes. But I've, I've got hours and hours and hours, and I would like to think that there's, uh, uh, that others might be interested in, in, in hearing some of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, and in fact, there was a guy named Ted Alvey. Does that do you know this guy? No. He he was working with uh, B. Mitchell Reed. In I LA. know B, I know B. Mitchell Reed because yeah. he was on the air here in New York. Yeah. Oh, was he? Okay. Well, I, he, I was at, he was at he was at WMCA LA. before I got there. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I I know him only. I know of him only from uh, uh, I think K. Well, oh, I never I never. Um, uh, I never heard B. Mitchell Reed. I mean, I never was yeah. around to be a fan of B. Mitchell Reed. But when I got there, his name was legend. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, B. Mitchell Reed used to work here. And now you have B. Mitchell Reed spot and whatever. I don't know, whatever. But, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, so that's how I got to know B. Mitchell Reed. Otherwise, I wouldn't even known who he was. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, do you know Charles Lacladera? I know the name. I know the name. Yeah. You know, these are very famous people in the broadcast business. But I never, you know, I lived out on the West Coast. I didn't hear any of these people, you know. Well, but, Aquadera was at, uh, at um, uh, I, I know this, but it's, it's I'm blocking out. He was in Southern California. Um, uh, I, I can't think of the call letters. Yeah. That doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> Only Northern California can. Well, the thing was, when I went to New York, there were all <clears> these people <throat> who were very famous, you know, that they weren't famous. Hello? Um, uh, they weren't very famous out in California because in those days you didn't have syndication or anything like that. And so if you were a star in New York City, mm. you, were, you were literally a hometown star. Mm. You know, Occasionally one would break out because they became famous nationally, but that was very rare. Uh, one of them was, of course, uh, uh, Murray the K., yeah. Well, yeah. you Murray, you knew Murray who Murray the K was. I we never heard him, but you knew who Murray the K was, and the other one was uh, Alan Freed. You know. Again, we knew who he was, right. uh, but you know, we, we otherwise, mm. you know, I it, if if you lived in San Francisco, you probably knew more in those days who Alex Bennett was as to who what Howard Stern was. Mm-hmm. Okay, who? you know, who? yeah, who? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I mean, you know, it it. it but the, now that's not the case. Now everybody's syndicated, and it's all a hodgepodge. And there, there's a Baskin Robbins in every neighborhood, and there's a Howard Stern in every neighborhood. You know, <laughs> uh, and uh, so it's different. It's different. Uh, but. Uh, I, uh, when I got to New York, you know, I mean, I, my, the big thing I remember, my, the biggest claim to fame that I have was that uh, WMCA had hired Murray the K to do a Saturday night program towards the end of his career, okay? Mm-hmm. And uh, one night, I guess, I don't know, he took, the, he took an upper one, he should have taken a downer and he went <laughs> sideways. And as I'm walking into the station, because I have to go do my show at like 10 o'clock at night, I followed Murray's show, right? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, and I always drop in, just say, hi, Murray, and then I go into the big studio where I did my Saturday night show. 
And um, as I'm walking in the front door of the radio station, they're wheeling Murray the K out on a gurney. Jeez. And uh, they're taking him to the hospital. And so I went upstairs immediately and I took over his show and did his show and just said, Murray's taken a little ill and he'll probably be back with you next. Well, he never was back the next week. That was his last night in New York wow. radio. He, he died? He, he passed he, he, No, no, he, he lived. He lived. Uh, I think he finally yeah. wound up maybe going down to Washington, D.C. and doing a program one day a week or something. Mm -hmm. But that was his last night in New York City and the guy who replaced him was me. Yeah. Did was there and uh, was did listeners cry out for where's where's Murray? No, no. I mean that wasn't what I just explained. Murray's taken a little bit ill, and they're you know, whatever. But I, I figured he'd be back. I figured he'd be back the next week, but he wasn't. That was it. You know. Weren't, weren't you on Mutual in the late seventies? Never. Never. Really. Never. No. Never on mutual. No, nope. and never on a mutual uh, affiliate either. WMCA was. In fact, mutual. most people. Does anybody here know what the mutual radio network was? See. Oh. Wasn't wasn't WMCA a mutual? No. I, I just learned this two days ago from watching you do a, do a a, a, a radio broadcaster thing uh, live in the Marriott 1991 well, that, no, that was with, that was with Larry, Larry King. King yeah I played that yeah, on this and, program and he, he brought up that you guys were at Mutual in 78 oh and you know no we weren't but we would were, was that WMCA I don't know it might have been might have been carried I know what it was they carried Larry King's broadcast off of Mutual but uh, I mean, they weren't but seven, they in they were in a Mutual station yeah, but Larry King used Mutual as the network to carry him across the country. Oh, okay, okay. So, yeah, I just watched it a couple nights ago. I found it. So that's a, oh, that's how boring my night was. I remember <laughs> that I have a somewhere. There's a picture of a publicity photo of all the WMC. Welcome to my world. Right, I love that where they're all holding telephones. They were all holding telephones. Yeah, and there's uh, you you see there's a there's a what's his name is Larry King. Is Sally, in that picture, Sally, Sally Jesse, Jesse Raphael. Raphael. Why have you seen this picture somewhere? No, no. I just remember what was said on the show the other day. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, you know, okay. and you you had said to Larry King that. that no, no, uh, no. Here's here's what I said. Oh. There were several of us, hmm. and they placed us at different places in this picture, and they put me down on the right hand corner and somebody up in the left hand corner and whatever. And after it was over, I went over to those people who were all in the corner and saying. I don't know if we're going to be here in a couple of weeks <laughs> right. because they can crop us out of the picture and not have to retake it. All right. And that's exactly what happened. A couple of weeks later, yeah, you, I was gone. You, another guy was in another corner was gone. On that video, you said that, you know, you, you told him that they said that you said yeah. everybody that was on the peripheral would be gone in two weeks. And guess what? In two weeks, they fired all of us. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, that's yeah, a, that, he I told. About, he talked about, and, and oh, Larry I said asked, I told that story to Larry. Yeah, right. Yeah, and Larry <clears> asked you, um, uh, "What time were you on?" And you said mornings, and it had to do with you. You got kicked out because the mayor lost whatever his name was, in New York mayor lost the race, and you told people you should have voted. For I'm him. trying to remember why I was I was suddenly gone. I think I was only part time by that time, but I I, really? I, I can't remember. You know, my whole career is just this big haze. But I'm sure if I ask Don Geller to find that picture, he'll find it somewhere. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, now i got to find it. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing in November? Your October's already booked, right? Is that what you said? What am I doing in November? No, Don. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, Don. Don, um, you said your month is already booked looking for your teacher. So you have another month? Yeah, that was August. Oh, that was August. Okay, yeah. and then and then September was the uh, the Rupert thing. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. October, I. Uh, I'm, <laughs> you're 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 going to cut me off after this. Um, <laughs> I'm I've been preparing, and in fact, I put it on hold. I started in early summer. Uh, every top ten list, um, uh, uh, entry by entry. 
Um, Every top oh, ten list? Yeah. So this I was asked to do this. This was an assignment. From who? Uh, Worldwide Pants. From, from Worldwide Pants. In other words, yeah. there's some stuff they're too lazy to do, right? Well, <laughs> they, mm -hmm. <laughs> what idiot's going to do this? I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to do every top ten list? Yeah, I'm, I'm up to September. It started in... Uh, How long September. is that is that going to be? Because... Up 100,000? <laughs> How many shows did Letterman do? Uh, uh, it, it started in 85, so mm -hmm. it was uh, 30 years, from 85 to 20. 30 years of top 10 lists, four nights a week, right? Uh, well, starting with Late Show, it was five, five nights a week. A late night, it was four nights a week. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, up, I'm up to September 89, so I've got a ways to go. Um, even man. there, I'm, I'm finding some interesting stuff. When, when uh, there were certain inside joke themes uh, that no one would get except the people who wrote the lists, uh, there would be these recurring jokes about uh, going to Red Lobster. Uh, <laughs> that, that means nothing to anybody, yeah. but it meant something to these people. So that to me is interesting. Yeah. So, in other words, uh, Worldwide Pants is calling upon your expertise and your lack of a life. To get certain well, things done. More than ladder. Challenging <laughs> Empathy. <you. laughs> Empathy. Let's see if he can do this. <laughs> yeah. I was so, going to mention, but I don't know if it's. Uh, there is a Buffalo Springfield song called uh, Bluebird. Yeah. Uh, it was on their second album, mm -hmm. uh, released in '67. Um, God, your mind it, is encyclopedic. Go ahead. Well, no, it's 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 not having a wife. Um, and I had heard, this is when I grew up in Baltimore, I heard somewhere in Baltimore that, that uh, there existed a 20-minute studio version of this song. Oh, um, and that's 67, 68. I go to Antioch, uh, 69 to 73. In 71, Poco uh, performs a, a live concert. Um, Poco... Among its members was was Richie Ferrey, who mm -hmm. was who was part of Buffalo Springfield. Right. Um, and I, uh, in, in fact, there, there was the, the soundboard was in the middle of this. It was this big uh, open space. I asked if I if I could plug in a, 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 a the, the radio station's tape recorder, and he said sure. So I had, I have a soundboard recording of the concert, and I, I, I put a cup. I put I put some of it up on YouTube. After the concert, <clears throat> I went up to Richie. And I asked him about this 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 twenty minute version, and he said, "Well, it was only it was ten it was ten minutes, not not twenty minutes." And right to this DJ in Boston, it was Charles Lacadere. Oh, okay. Um, and and I wrote, lying that I was the chief recording engineer at the, at the college radio station, um, and asking for this, uh, and like two weeks later. I got it. He sent me the, a reel-to-reel -reel tape of this thing, um, and the first it was and it was at 15 IPS, um, and so the first thing I did I made a dub at seven and a half, seven yeah seven seven. seven uh, In those seven days, folks, I, I just want to explain this to the. Oh no! Yeah, it was 15 IPS. So this it was these people have to half. understand that there were several recording speeds, and 15 IPS was usually the fast speed that you would do if you were recording for posterity some music. Yeah, I, I think in recording shows they were, they were 30. Yeah. yeah, and the average uh, tape recorder you bought for your home did seven and a half inches per second and also had a three and three quarters yeah, inches per second. Yeah, it was going second. real fast. Yeah. And yeah. cassettes were at one, one and seven eighths. Yeah, but whatever. But yeah, um, so I got it. And I made a dub onto seven, seven and a half, so I could play for people or if people wanted dubs. I make them dubs, mm -hmm. and I, and I put this the 15 IPS version. I just tucked it away. In 2002, I started digitizing a lot of my reel to reels, and I came across this. Oh, oh. Um, when I got, I, I wrote the letter to, to to BCM, and I just want to show you this. Oops, oh, this is this is the letter. Yeah, this is the letter. It, it was returned to me, annotated. Annotated. <laughs> yeah, and at the bottom, uh, he's he's explaining what he's including. But I didn't know who it was. It was Charles something. I couldn't make out the name. Yeah. Because I didn't know I didn't know who Charles Lacodara was at the time. Right. So in two thousand two and two thousand three. 
uh, I'm digitizing it, and I said, I I never thank. Oh, oh, I I, I finally figured out that who it was uh, yeah. a couple years later. Okay. Uh, and so I I hunted him down. He retired, lives in Hawaii. Yeah. Um, and uh, I emailed him, and and I said, you know, I never thanked you for what you did like 34 years ago. And he emails me back like 15 minutes later, and says, I was just this moment looking for that version online and i can't find it anymore <laughs> because he had lost his you know decades ago yeah. um so i sent you know of course i sent him mm-hmm. you know it, 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 i sent it to him um and i'm finding out that that version has appeared on bootlegs but the version that he had sent me is the best quality out there yeah um but so anyway I, yeah so yeah. it was it, it, uh I'll tell you, you know what's interesting is... Did you post that, John? A uh, Don? Uh, no, it's John Geller, is that it? It's, no, yeah. it's John Geller. It's John Geller. John, John Geller. John Geller. Uh, yeah. John in John fact, Geller. what I did is, is I, uh, I, I had put it... I, I had written a blog essay, uh, and I had put it on... Uh, there's, a, there's an audio thing, the audio boom, I think it's called, and I made it available on there. But last year, I decided to just... To put it on YouTube, but also include every other version of that song, both studio and live. I'd and like to look it up. Compilation of every Bluebird, uh, <coughs> so you can you can find it online if 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 you were if, yeah, if you're everybody really should listen to those things. Time. Otherwise, he really <laughs> has no life. Anyway, what what? Uh, yes, Alan. Well, I don't have a life either, so I want to look it up. Yeah, uh, Alan. There you go. Uh, when when Jack is gone, you should put Don in Jack's place. This guy's got all the facts. That's true. You mean the one that the ones that Jack doesn't have? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we have one from last night where he made a mistake on the Powerball and he named fifteen as the Powerball, and I looked and it was five, and he said nope, it was fifteen, and then he then he changed it to he, oh he said five, and he said prove me wrong. Well, I went in and, and Wayne actually went first, and then I went second and listened to it. And it, uh, well, I don't get what you're saying, though. The Powerball, the, the lottery. Uh, how much it was? No, no, no. no Jack was saying, did anybody on the show win? And uh, he announced the numbers, which were wrong, of course. And so I corrected just the Powerball. And he, you know, he said, no. Nope, well, I, you know, we really should say that this, this network, GabNet, is a, it, it, we have no life. <laughs> you know? None of us do. Huh? <laughs> that's, that's the thing. Uh, uh, correcting somebody is not the most friendly thing to do. No, no, it's not. Yeah. So, so it's not. I mean, I did that with you, uh, uh, like six, seven months ago, uh, and and I was not enjoying it, uh, and I got the feeling you were you were not enjoying oh, it either. No, so no, I no. I off. I don't mind it in the least. Mm-hmm. I like to be corrected. That's what women are for, to correct the men. <laughs> no, you know, I mean, I've said it before. Uh, you know, I, I used to go on the air, and I'd say, okay, I'm, you know, the only reason I'm right is because I'm the host of the show. <laughs> you know, and that, that, that's, my, that's my fate in life is that I'm, I'm correct all the time. But I could be wrong, and I want the audience to know I could be wrong. And if I am wrong, please correct me. Jack likes me to correct him. That's what he keeps saying. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting tired of it, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so can I call you Reverend Ike? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Whoever Reverend Ike. So is. anyway, so uh, we, we live close, don't we, Don? Where are you? Huh? Remo. Oh. I'm 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 in New York. He's I'm, in New I'm, York. Yeah. yeah that's oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Oh, let's go to dinner tomorrow night. <laughs> that's really close. I thought he was from the Bay Area. I'm sorry. I used to be. I, I lived. I lived in San Francisco from '73 to '78. I was in school. Uh, but he and, threw and, you off when he said Antioch because there's an Antioch yeah. teller. And, and then I, I heard, started doing yeah, my that's shows. What I heard Antioch. too was oh, Antioch, and I thought that East Bay. Oh, right. East Coast and then too. I started doing my shows there in the in '80. You know, there'll be a quiz. But okay, uh, now I got it. Anyway, so I, you know. Otherwise, you know, nothing, uh, nothing much has been happening on this end of my life, except that uh, every day we try to have me walk more and more, and uh, it's, yeah, uh, today we took a walk, a little bit of walk. Oh, let me show you. 
This is my Which newest. Was, this is my newest acquisition. An arm? You got a right oh, arm? Did you get the new uh, watch? This is no. This is the Apple Ultra watch. Ooh. Ultra. Watch. Oh, well, now Phil's gonna have to rush out and get one. Yeah, yeah. And I got to tell you, I love it. It's just it's to begin with for a guy who's getting old and losing his eyesight. It's nice to have that real estate down there to look at. You know. But it is is it an iWatch or is it just a regular watch? It says watch, it's an Apple Watch. It's the Apple so Watch it's, Ultra, I think it's called. And uh I've, when they come out with the Ultra what, the, Plus in six months, Phil will want one. What what does it do that the other watch didn't do? It's bigger. It, oh, where, where the other one's like forty six millimeters, this one's forty nine. Yeah. And 49. also the, one, the battery, so far I have gone since uh Oh, about six o'clock last night, and I'm only down to fifty-nine hmm. percent oh, on the watch. Great. Usually, by now, it'd be dead. Yeah. So yeah. it it yeah. goes a couple of days without Charging needing night. charging. What? So is it is this is it is it a recharge with one of these guys? Yeah. You all know it, it recharges no, no, no. with it with That's this with this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. this. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. and you just put that on the back of the watch and it, the so magnet getting rid of the lightning how plug. many people have one of the lightning cables like Dawn has well I have, getting I rid have, of those. I have this there we go yeah yeah, yeah. We go. yeah that's those are going bye bye I have every plug known to mankind I have this one too wait a minute yeah me too there we go there's the new yeah. one that's the yeah. new one yeah. Yeah. I got this old one yeah, I That's got the new one right yeah. there. Well, you know, the reason they went to the other one, I'm sure Apple didn't like having to do it because they always like oh. their own, you know, their own version. Uh, and uh, the reason they went to the new ones is because the government said you got to. This is now the new standard. So the, it's the USB-C is what it is. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah, right. You know, so Apple... Has they had to go. You know, I don't think that. Right, let me get a tissue here. USB C. I can't. Wait. But my lap, my laptop charges with the USB C also. Yeah, just about everything does now. Mm. Yeah, well, they, it, everything will, because they wanted to make it the standard. Uh, mm. wow, I have yeah, a so nine thousand four. A scuzzy. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh God, yes, yes I, I remember got some of those wow. too. <laughs> yeah. You want some more? Yeah, well, I, really <laughs> I think good. actually. Anybody want some lightning cables? I bought them when they were on sale. No, I think <laughs> this can actually almost do what a SCSI used to do. You know, so. Yeah, except with SCSI, you you needed you needed you needed this. You know, an end. Yeah. Or, or, <laughs> yeah. Had to plug it into. Yeah. yeah. Gee, I, it's fun to know I've gone through through my life having gone through so many different format changes. Right. You know, well, and you I, know, when you were a kid. A, a little cup, a piece of string, and another cup. And then when you got a little older, walkie-talkies came out. Mm -hmm. And a little older phones, touch-tone phones came out. Nobody yeah. ever lost their phone either. And then in, <laughs> in the, in the uh, in like 2001 or two or something like that, cell phones came out. And Apple came out in 2007 with the first iPhone, smartphone. Yeah. And, you know, and so well, you've gone. Can you let Don talk some more, please? What? Can you let... <laughs> I ran across this the other day. Oh, oh, I got a bunch of those. You want them, Kevin? I got a bunch of them. Oh, nope. I, got, I got tons of those. <laughs> Let's see. I have reel to reel tape. I got VHS, blank VHS tape. And I have reel to reel for audio, reel to reel tape. Then yeah. we had cassettes. Then we had. Uh, uh, we had eight tracks before cassettes. Eight, eight, well, eight, right. eight tracks before cassettes. Uh, yeah. Was yes. that before yeah, cassettes? It okay. was reel to reel, then it was eight track. Then it I was am cassette. proud to say I never had an eight track. Me yeah, either. Oh, I did. Yeah, my parents did. Most of them ended up on the freeway. Yeah. <laughs> my parents did. <laughs> and out the window, huh? Yeah, I mean, I never had an or inside the tr the player. Yeah, but I did player. have I did have cassettes, of course, right. because cassettes I loved because that meant I could. Where before with the with the old radio shows, they were on the big reels because they were 15 inches per second. <laughs> they were on big reels, and just to store like a week's worth of shows took a whole shelf, you know. Yeah. 
Because well, each one was only an hour. for commercials and stuff? Oh, we used to have the cartridges for commercials. That's what became the 8-track. Were those 4-track, though? Well, those were like 4-track, weren't they? Well, that's yeah. what became the 8-track. Yeah. Right. Okay. And they weren't 4-track. They were only 2-track. And okay. they had a tone I, on them. I like the 8-tracks. No, but whoever they, they... Whoever designed they, them... Whoever designed I'm, them knew I'm, how Yeah, but I'm trying to explain the, the oh, cartridges sorry. that we used in radio studios. And we still use them well past uh, the 8-track. They kept using them. Yeah. Uh, and what, what happened is there would be a tone every time there was a different track on the, uh, on the tape uh, so that it would just cue up to the next tone so that you could then, you know, always have it ready to go again. You know, for the Didn't you have a little counter on the, on the machine that read them? No. That was oh. like the um, the on TV you always got the little flash in the corner. That was yeah. when there was time for a commercial. Oh, that that was yeah. well. That you know what that was a the that movies. was a throwback to the movies. Yeah. In the which movies. they used to when you would uh, when you would get to the end of a reel. Uh, Weren't they ten, yeah. ten white sec- circles? Yes. Yeah, the little white circle would First, pop on there. First thirty seconds before the reel change. Yeah. There would be one of those circles that would come yeah. up. Then, ten seconds beforehand. Uh, it would uh, it would uh, come up again. Yep. You knew to start the other projector, right. and when Learn. the next flash came up, you'd flip over to the other projector. Yeah. Learned that on Columbo. I learned that because I learned how to do that at a movie theater in Weed, California. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, I got uh, a shirt from the Weed Fire Department. <laughs> well, I had a friend who owned a movie theater up there. And he, oh, okay. so he said, here, I'll teach you how to do this. And so I watched him a couple of times, and I, I did it, you know. We, My brother-in-law we, used to work at Channel 36, and he taught me all that stuff, yeah. I mean, how to change, uh, they change yeah, reels? Yeah, yeah. And, wow. He did the all-night movies. But that's there. why in very old <laughs> copies of films, you won't see them on the newer ones, yeah. you see what are the cue marks that went up yep. there. Is yeah. weed up by Shasta? Well, when, it went yeah. to, when they went to video. When they went to to uh, TV, they did the same cube marks up there. But weren't, yeah. weren't they weren't they uh, sort of white lines? It was, lines it was a square. Top. It was a square. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and they were yeah. faster, I think, weren't they? Huh? Yeah, they'd really be watching for those. Though. Well, I don't think you really need to do them much. All you need to do is when you saw the cue, you just yeah. you know you just uh, uh, flipped on that, played the next tape. Is what you went to like the commercial or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we're all through with that. We don't need that anymore. Everything's digital. And it's, it's all computerized. And they, they cut off commercials. They cut off talking heads and everything on TV now. Oh, yeah. How, how, how big are were those those huge platters uh, uh, that you put on the turn? That's why the turntable was so huge because you could put on the, these 10-inch. Well, there were, there were 10 in the, in the early days of radio. There were the ten-inch discs, which were a half-hour show. Mm-hmm. But some, I have one. Yeah. And and it it it's it's a commercial that my mom was in. Okay. Back yeah. in the early '60s. Yeah. And, and I'm trying to figure out who, where I might be able to take it to, so they could play it. I I don't even know if the grooves are even there anymore. Um, you, you could play it on a, a, well. No, you'd have to have a bigger turntable yeah, you'd have you, to have you, a 10 yeah. inch turntable oh, excuse me right. uh, well there were 12 inch discs there were 10 inch mm-hmm. discs and these were like 16 inch discs or something like that uh, yeah. this may be this may be a 12 inch here we I, are. I, I have to I, I'm, I'm looking at it it's, it's out of reach i yeah. can't get to it now. anyway here comes a the theme folks uh mm-hmm. there thank it is god. yeah wouldn't thank god <laughs> well it's been a nice little yeah. chat we've had tonight you know Nothing wrong with that. And with a bunch of nice people. So, I really yeah, appreciate it. A little better. Yeah? What is the problem here with this? <laughs> oh, there we go. I got it. Okay. I had to readjust it. On Mo- Wednesdays, everything goes for Blungeon. Anyway, hey, thank you to uh, Charlie Wallace for being here this evening. Thank you, Charlie. Appreciate it. Uh, Alan, thank you for being here. Jeff? Nice having you aboard. <coughs> Brian, good to see you again, my friend. Uh, Don yeah. Giller, whose n- name you can see on any number of YouTube 
things. If you look at it, a lot of the Letterman's, you can find the compilations of Don Giller, who is a, I, I you know, I mean, I, I consider him a, uh, what, what's the word I used to use for Shecky? Brand? Uh, no. Wuss? Huh? Wuss? <laughs> no. Uh, uh, oh, boy. I'll, I'll remember the term later. Anyway. Yes. A pest, yes, a pest. And thank you to also to uh, Kevin for being here tonight. Everybody, give yourself a big wave goodbye. I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. And, uh, you know, that's it for tonight with our citizen panel. Anyway, uh, I uh, appreciate it. Uh, Don is a resource. That's the term I wanted, a resource. Okay. In my old age, I'm forgetting stuff. Just bear with me. I'm an oldie but goodie. Anyway, Jack Bishop is next with the intersection. Be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.